He was the result of some acts of cruelty from everyone around him, acts that transformed him into a monstrosity. Sometimes, this transformation led to an improvement in his life, like helping him make new friends, but other times, it led to him being confined inside a container. Today I will be talking about all the versions of the Mutagen Man. The character was created for the Playmates line, based on a concept by Peter Laird. In this original sketch, the character was named the Unknown and he was the result of a failed experiment to combine a gorilla and an insect. As a result, his organs had to be kept inside a protective artificial shell. According to Laird's 1989 concept, he would have had organs floating inside of him and would have had some lighting features. But Playmates renamed this concept as Mutagen Man in 1990, one of Krang's experiments that depended on ooze to replenish his deteriorating form. This concept was expanded into the TV show in 1991 by David Wise, where he was voiced by Rob Paulson. In that episode, Krang and Shredder were trying to mix rocket fuel with mutagen, taking advantage of a rocket launch that would have gone to Venus. The vapor trail left behind by the launch would have mutated the population of New York. This mutation, however, would have been temporary. All they needed to make it permanent was a chemical known as Bindex-3, a chemical bebop and Rocksteady failed to steal. I know, I know, you don't have to tell me. I'm not! I'm telling the audience. But the villains were interrupted by Seymour Guts, a fly-by-night messenger, who got their thinking he was going into a flower shop. Bebop and Rocksteady fired at him, causing him to fall into a vat of this new mutagen, tearing him apart. They put him back together, but by then, he became a monstrosity that relied on a mutagen supply to stay whole. But it wasn't all bad news. Within minutes of being in this form, he discovered he could shapeshift into other forms, copying looks and sounds. However, this ability could only be sustained for a few minutes at a time. Knowing he could blend in more easily than Bebop and Rocksteady, they sent him to steal the Bindex-3. He accepted as the chemical was also the key to helping him stay in one form. But in his steel attempt, the Bindex-3 ended up inside the Channel 6 van. Trying to get the chemical back, he infiltrated the Channel 6 building and, passing as Vernon, he stole back the Bind X-3. Uh, excuse me. My, what a handsome fellow. April realized this wasn't Vernon and followed him, only to discover he was a monster. Seymour tried to put her away, but she was rescued by the Turtles. By the time they found Seymour, he was already betrayed by the Shredder and leaking mutagen. The turtles helped him, and he told them about the mutagenic vapor trail plan. With the help of Seymour's abilities, they fooled the villains and ruined their plans. With the Bindex-3 recovered, the turtles asked Seymour to change to his final form, but instead of going back to how he used to look, he transformed into a more good-looking fella and ended up dating April O'Neil. The character was adapted to the small screen again for the 2012 show, where he was voiced by Roger Craig Smith. But in this version, Mutagen Man wasn't Seymour Guts. Instead, he started as a different character named Timothy, a vigilante known as the Pulverizer who got inspired after seeing the Turtles fight against Baxter Stockman. The Turtles had to save him and accidentally dragged him into their lair. While they fought against the Krang, Timothy stayed at the lair, where Donatello tried to train him without success. Apparently, you have not taught him shame. After seeing the results, Splinter warned Donnie that training him would make him his responsibility. After only making things worse in battle, Donnie decided to stop training him. Desperate to get proper training, Timothy joined the Bradford Dojo, where he was recruited to the Foot Clan as cannon fodder. After discovering this, the Turtles warned him about it and told him to quit, but Timothy somehow misinterpreted this as them asking him to become their spy. Pulverizer sent them a tip about the Foot's plans. They were stealing mutagen to create a mutant army. Seeing how useful Timothy was being, the Turtles allowed him to put his life at risk further, despite Donnie's warnings. After learning the clan was going to mutate only one person, Timothy offered himself, assuming the mutation would have made him equal to the Turtles, allowing him to join them in their adventures. Despite the intervention of the Turtles, Timothy bathed himself in this unstable mutagen, and perhaps because he wasn't in contact with any animals before this, he was turned into a giant blob monstrosity. In this form, the Turtles had no choice but to contain him inside a canister, and they took him to Donnie's lab, where he would spend the rest of his days. It was unclear if Timothy had a family that could be looking for him. Donatello was all he had from then on. 
but Donatello had other problems on his mind. After April's father was mutated into a bat, she decided to stay away from the turtles for a while, and with the introduction of Casey Jones into her life, Donnie started feeling devastated about losing his crush. He kept talking on and on about April to Timothy, who eventually fell in love with this idealized version of April. Donnie was working with some mutagen to find a way to revert April's father's mutation. Timothy ate this mutagen, and this gave him more abilities. He created arms and legs for himself and escaped the lair to find April. Now renamed Mutagen Man, he could throw acid from his hands, becoming quite deadly to the turtles. After figuring out he needed the mutagen to be strong, Donnie baited him with one of his false cures, which froze him. Donnie was unable to cure Mutagen Man. Not only he needed some retro mutagen, but he also needed to be thawed, something Donnie said would happen naturally after 70 years. It's not that Donnie didn't spend any time working on a retro mutagen, but it was usually for someone else, like Splinter, Car Eye, or April's father. In one of his attempts to create retro mutagen, he created a creature named Drip, who had the power to manipulate water. Donnie froze him and stored him in a canister. Since the show ended without solving this plot, the only other clue we have about his final fate was the apocalyptic future after the mutagen bomb hit the city. His canister was at the bottom of the Scale Tales arena ditch, implying that perhaps he died fighting there. But who knows? The episodes with Timothy in them were an example of the Turtles being teenagers who needed to learn about their responsibilities and actions. The Turtles didn't have much empathy for the Pulverizer. They made jokes about killing or letting him die for them, and only Donnie tried to do the right thing, but not all the time. Because of the way the episodes were written, the audience's overall impression is that Donnie spent most of his time trying to save all the other victims of the mutagen, except for Timothy, but it is unlikely that this was intentional. It was just how the plots were handled that made it look like the turtles were real jerks to him. Did he have family searching for him? Could he have been handled to the Utrams to find a cure? At least one additional episode could have answered these questions. These two versions were humans turned into monsters, but what about Laird's original concept of combining two types of mutants? The IDW Comics debuted a version more aligned with that concept during the Mutanimals miniseries. In that story, the Mutanimals invaded one of Null Industries' labs to rescue Lindsay Baker and Pigeon Pete, and found the Mutagen Man, a hybrid of dozens of animal types who was also a mutant. He was the result of many experiments done by Null to create the ultimate mutants that could serve as slaves for all types of dangerous jobs. When they told Mutagen Man they were there to save him, he thought that meant they were going to finally put him out of his misery. The Mutanimals escaped with him and took him to their headquarters. There, Mondo Gecko called him Seymour Guts because that was all he could see whenever he talked to him. Knowing there were two more mutants to rescue, Man Ray and Sally, the Mutanimals returned, only to get captured again, which traumatized Seymour further. They were saved by Slash and Mondo, but it was clear to Mutagen Man that they needed to prevent more animal suffering at the hands of Null. He modified his suit to overheat and erupted into Null's lab to blow it all up with all the humans inside. Seymour didn't get to go in a blaze of glory. The Mutanimals rescued and fixed his suit. After that confrontation with Null, the Mutanimals started getting investigated by Agent Bishop from the Earth Protection Force. He sent a black ops team known as Darkwater to kidnap Slash. They did some research on him and found a way to manipulate him. They sent Slash back to the headquarters to capture all the Mutanimals, and in this fight, Seymour's container cracked open, losing liquids. While captive, Lindsay was able to keep Seymour alive, but barely. They freed themselves, but it was clear that Seymour didn't have that much time to live. Mondo asked Lindsay to put him into a coma to give him some time to get the necessary technology from the Earth Protection Force to keep him alive. Seymour protested this and asked for them to put him to sleep permanently, something they ignored. Mondo and Mikey infiltrated the EPF and got what they needed. With this technology, they were able to put what was left of him inside a new suit, and he was brought back from the coma. Seymour was mad at Mondo for not letting him die, but he quickly understood that Mondo did this because he didn't want to be alone in this world. But more tragedy would hit the Mutanimals during a fight against the EPF that would end with the heroic sacrifice of Slash. His death motivated Old Hop to take more radical measures against their enemies, and he started plotting a terrorist attack with the help of Man Ray. Unbeknownst to them, Mondo camouflaged and learned about their plans. 
but he wasn't strong enough to stop them, and on election night, they tried to interrupt Baxter's victory speech. This event ended with Old Hop throwing a mutagen bomb at the audience, mutating a whole neighborhood. This resulted in the creation of Mutant Town. Disagreeing with what the moot animals turned into, Seymour and Mondo left the group and hit the road, and they are yet to return to the comics. Every version of the Mutagen Man so far has been an exercise in dark creativity. Of all of these, my least favorite is probably the 2012 one, but mostly because his existence made the turtles look like very selfish beings. I don't have a favorite version, but the original Playmates action figure is one of my favorite toys of all time. And speaking of favorites, here is a shout out to Anthony Amory for his support, and to Papyrus for his many comments on videos and posts. If you are interested in more videos exploring the different versions of one character, check out this video about all the Mona Lisas. Thanks for watching.